I've been praying for a theme for the new year. And last year, the Lord gave me the word hope, you know, just to bring hope to people. After COVID, people were hopeless. They were all isolated. They lost perspective. And that's what the devil wants to do. You know, I see the devil's hand working so much through COVID to try to get everybody alone, separated out from their communities and their people and fearful and hopeless, right? Amen. Um, so this last year, I think we've been doing a good job bringing hope to our friends and our family and our co-workers. I've heard great stories. I've seen things happening in my life. And so in 2024, God wants us to keep doing that. Don't stop. It's not like we get a new word and you stop doing that. But the way to do it, the word the Lord gave me this year is persevere. Persevere in the new year. This guy over here trying to paddle out, he started over here. Yep. He's got a tiny little board, and he's yep. persevering, but now he's all the way down there somewhere. Yep. Oh, God wants us to persevere in the new year, to keep at it. Now, it could be that it's the wrong thing that you're trying. <laughs> you need to just go back and choose another thing. In his case, a bigger board. But um, <laughs> Higher time. But when we persevere, it gives others hope. They see our lives and they're like, how did that happen? Why are you doing so okay? And it gives them hope because we persevered with our faith. With our hands wide open, we were able to climb that mountain. That's an interesting image because when you're climbing, you kind of like to have your hands ready to grab something. So I'm gonna climb this mountain with my hands wide open. That's like relying fully on the Lord, you know? And then, and then our persevering will usher the kingdom of God into the lives of our church. You know, Jesus prayed, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. We're not waiting for the kingdom later, y'all. Guess what? We're doing kingdom right now. We're bringing kingdom right here. God's authority, His sovereignty, His power, His love, His truth right here on Church on the Beach. And I prayed for this spot. I walked around it barefoot 17 years ago and asked for this spot and we've met here every week for the most part since and I don't have a permit by the way because I just meet here it's just a birthday party for Jesus every Sunday well we don't block access we don't have um, amplification so that's the key so what does it mean to persevere According to Merriam-Webster, perseverance is continued effort to do or achieve something despite difficulties, failure, or opposition. Dictionary.com says persevering is to persist in anything undertaken, maintain a purpose in spite of difficulty, obstacles, or discouragement, and to continue steadfastly. That's what God wants us to do this year. Be thinking about what you're doing in your life right now as you're hearing this message. God wants you to persevere and not give up. Yeah. So, before I continue, I'd like to pray. Lord, I just thank you for your truth. I thank you for your Holy Spirit that we can't do this on our own. As we open our hands up and give it to you, you fill us, you enable us, and you give us the courage and the faith to press on. Press on. Forgetting what lies behind and pressing on. Help us to understand this word and this message by your Holy Spirit so we can apply it to our own life. In Jesus' name, amen. So the first note you have there is persevere in what God has given you to do. Right now. Right? Look at Galatians 6.9. Gal Galatians, no, Galatians 6 9. If you can't remember where it is, it's after Corinthians. And then you have go eat popcorn. Galatians is the G. General Electric Power Company. Galatians 6 9. Underline this. Let's not become discouraged in doing good. Don't stop stop what are you doing right now that's good don't stop let's not become discouraged in doing good for in due time we will reap if we do not become weary 
we don't become weary. Look over at 2 Thessalonians 3.3. 3. You have to put your tongue between your teeth to say Thessalonians, like Sylvester the cat. 2 Thessalonians 3.3, 3, I'm sorry. 3.13. But as for you, Brothers and sisters, do not grow weary of doing good. What are you doing good right now that's getting tiresome? You're not seeing the results. You keep doing the right thing. You keep doing good. And you don't feel like you're getting the results. Don't stop. Don't stop. You will reap in due time. You will reap a harvest in due time. Keep your hand to the plow. Don't look back when you're plowing because then you're going to make zigzag lines. <laughs> Cross. God wants us to persevere in what He's given you to do. Think about what you're doing right now. You got your family, you got your job. Some of us are partially retired. We have those things to do. We, you know, we have ministry. We're going to talk about the spiritual gifts in a few weeks from 1 Corinthians 12. God has called you to certain functions within the church. Continue to do those things. And sometimes it's like, feels like, wow, same old, same old. No, it's not. You're being faithful. We all want to be fat. That's not a very good New Year's message, is it? <laughs> but let me give you the skinny on fat. <laughs> F is faithful. A is available. And T is teachable. Fat. So, a man was heard saying, after so much effort and so many tries, my wife finally was able to make a handmade purse. Now that's what I call perseverance. <laughs> <That's your dad. laughs> I'm a dad. It's legal, okay? So what has he called you to do? Think about what is he, what are you doing in your life right now? What are you going to be doing in 2024? Don't just suddenly jump ship because it's difficult. I was one of those guys. I went to seven colleges, four majors. I was in college for 10 years. Eventually I got out. My parents were very patient with me. I lived in 14 different places in LA. I had like eight or nine different jobs. And then I got married and had four babies and I stuck with my job. <laughs> Praise the Lord and I persevered. What is he having you do right now that He wants you to keep your hand to the plow and not give up. It could be in sports. There's a lot of people that do sports. I like sports. Yesterday, last night, there was one of the most fantastic Dallas Cowboy plays I've ever seen in my 64 years of life because I've watched all of them. Dak Prescott was in the end zone, about to get a safety. The defensive guy hit him in the end zone. He spun off, ran to the right, C.D. Lamb, who's a Christian, found out at the end of the game, did his scramble drill. He ran around looking for him, threw the ball to him, 92-yard touchdown from the 8-yard line. Come on! I actually hurt my hand last night because I jumped up in our office and hit the roof. <laughs> so exciting. Dak is a Christian. C.D. Lamb is a Christian. Last night he got 227 yards receiving, the most ever in one game and for a long time, and he's now the leading receiver for the Cowboys in history, more than Michael Irvin. At the end of the game they said, CD, so tell us about this. He said, I want to give glory to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wow, I didn't know that about CD. That guy rocks. And this whole time he's been a believer? How cool is that? Being faithful, coming out of Oklahoma, playing for Dallas, he told the coach, listen, throw to me. Throw to me. I'm going to help you. He's not trying to be a prima donna. He said, I'm ready. So he started throwing to him, and now they're winning. He is consistent doing what God has given him to do. And you know what? There's a lot of guys that drop the ball. You know what I'm talking about? Who like to watch football here? Raise your hands. Doesn't it frustrate you when a guy gets paid millions of dollars and he can't catch it? It's like, That's all you have to do. You know? So it's cool when they do well. There's a beautiful example of perseverance in the film out right now called Boys in the Boat. Anybody seen that? It's so good. 
I don't want to wreck it for you, but I'm just going to hit some highlights because it's in the trailer anyway. Trailers drive me crazy because you know the whole movie already. It's like, seriously. But anyway, it's a film about a rowing team in the from the University of Washington in 1936 that eventually went to the Olympics in Berlin. And I don't want to tell you more. I have to hold back. But this guy, Joe Lance, grew up in the He's coming out of the depression. They don't have any money, and his father's left him alone. And he's basically orphaned, and he's trying to get money to be an engineer. Speaking of Hope Chapel, he wants to go to Hope Chapel. No. <laughs> he wants to be an engineer. He has no money, so he said, "Why don't you get on the rowing team?" Well, what do you do? You grab the oar and you row. You know, well, it's not so simple when you have like ten guys in a boat and you have to be all synced and all that kind of stuff. So I learned a lot about rowing. But they beat the odds, big time odds, by persevering as a team and as individuals to overcome poverty, to overcome those guys that they are getting sick in the movie, overcoming sickness, family issues. You know what I'm talking about where you get lost in your own head and people are, you just all of a sudden you can't do anything right because you keep thinking about something. It's like, come on man, stop that stinking thinking, right? Well, they overcome all these things and each one learns to take care of their part of the boat. We need to take care of our part of the boat in the church. We're all in this long boat with an oar. But we're not relying on our own strength. If we're working together in the Holy Spirit, we're going to, you know, years ago I had a vision. I stood up in the middle of Hope Chapel, 300 people to give a word to the church. I was so nervous, my pelvis was shaking. <laughs> Crazy. And I said, I have a vision of us all in little paddle boats in the marina at Redondo, and we're paddling with our feet. And we have our little Christian stickers on our boats. Hey, how was church? It was great. Great sermon, how you doing? Had a nice week. And we're all paddling around inside the break wall, and we're all safe. But we're wearing out because we're paddling in our own strength. And Jesus is at the break wall with a big cigar boat. And it says, Holy Spirit on the side. He's all, come on, all aboard. <laughs> Holy Spirit power. But you're looking out there. But the waves are big out there. It's scary. And Jesus is all, trust me. Trust me. Get out of your paddle boat. Your little, those little boats, you know, you do with your feet get in my boat filled with the Holy Spirit I'm gonna take you places you never dreamed of this year Joe and Stu and I went to the Amazon in Bolivia I didn't even know where Bolivia was believe it or not and we had the most amazing adventure down there trusting the Lord driving a rental going pop 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 with all the lights on the dash I don't think they had a spare tire all piled in the truck heading into the jungle with water filter systems and Jesus. And we were okay. We persevered over and over on that trip to make it happen. In this movie, you'll see them. They can persevere. They keep rowing. They keep rowing for the team. Let's keep rowing. Keep rowing by Holy Spirit power for the church, for the kingdom. Amen? Amen. Yeah. And we gotta be in sync. We gotta love each other. We gotta know what the other guy's doing behind you so you don't bunk him in the head with your elbow. You gotta keep up with the guy in front of you, caring for each other, calling each other, loving on each other. I'm learning how to do this too. I'm a, I think I'm a better communicator than I am a, a pastor. I'm learning how to pastor. I'm learning to care for people, right? It's not that easy. Learning to call and take care of people, spend time with them. I actually enjoy it. But I'm learning after 17 years, I'm still learning. Discipling. I got a couple of guys in our church. I'm discipling. You know, maybe there'll be somebody in your life that you want to pour into. Go have coffee with at the Blue Butterfly in El Segundo or one of these other places and just talk to them. What are you reading in the Bible these days? Do you have any questions? Take somebody that's younger than you in the Lord. You know, Paul took a Timothy. Or if you're the Timothy, find a Paul that you can follow. So you can learn more about the Lord. But we gotta keep rowing, gotta keep being faithful. Amen.
Yeah. And Galatians 6, 9 says, Let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we will reap a harvest if we do not grow weary. See, when I used to preach in church, I never had to worry about my papers blowing off when I was in the building. It's much more exciting out here. All right. Isaiah 40, 31. If you don't have this underline in your Bible, I encourage you to. It's been one of my life verses. Isaiah 40, 31. Those who wait for the Lord will gain new strengths. we got to wait on Him. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. I especially feel this right now because I've been going through sciatica issues. This past week I went to acupuncture. Wow, that was interesting. I was in the acupuncture place in Gardena with a real Chinaman. Like the real deal. And uh, then a guy came in that only spoke Spanish. And he only spoke Chinese and they are speaking broken English to each other. It was quite interesting. And then that guy left. He's trying to sell something. And I'm laying on this table with pens in me. My whole body. And then another guy came in speaking Chinese to him, and I felt like, am I in China? What happened? I just got translated to Beijing, you know? But uh, I've been doing all this that I can to persevere and be able to walk and stand. I've been going to a chiropractor and having my body stretched on this table for three weeks. They've gone from 65 to 83 millimeters, whatever that means, so that my disc will move. And I just, you know, persevering and God is going to help me. I'm trusting Him that I will run and not get tired and walk and not become weary. Did the in fact, standing work? right here right now, I'm not in pain. Praise the Lord. Oh, so the acupuncture work? I think so. We'll see. So, it could be your marriage that needs maintenance. Work on it. Persevere. Don't give up. Mike is celebrating his 13th year with Yay. his lovely wife here, Claire. Happy anniversary. And I've been married to my wife 27 years. I'm so grateful for every year. And it takes work, right? Got to check the oil. Got to check the belts. Put it up on the rack every once in a while. Check the transmission. You know, maintain, persevere. Don't <laughs> give up. Divorce is not good. It, does not solve anything it does not we talked at length about divorce a few weeks ago <clears throat> God only allows divorce in certain areas and that's when you after you've tried everything work on your marriage stay the course persevere it could be your job don't give up I've had a lot of different jobs teaching sixth grade in the inner city many times I'd come home to to Elena in the kitchen with all the little babies all over our house feeling like I was going to go postal you know and I had to learn to put all my troubles on the trouble tree on the porch before I came in so I could read to the kids and well usually I fell asleep but at least try I'd start the first page and go and then they all went to bed you know <laughs> um, but you know persevere at work Persevere at home. God wants us to stay the course. Don't just give up. Don't just give up. He wants us to set our faces like flint. I was told to do that before I went to YWAM in 1994. And when I, I did really well in the Ukraine for three months. And then when I went to Thailand, I had a hard time because I didn't set my face like flint. I let my emotions get to me. I had panic attacks. Eventually, the Lord healed me, brought me home, made me a school teacher, and I survived. But Paul Hagazian had a good word for me before I went to Youth with a Mission. Set your face like flint. Be determined to do God's will. Not in your own strength, but be determined. Lord, fill me with your spirit today. Help me read your word. Be, have spiritual discipline. Choose your friends. Don't hang out with a bunch of guys that are not believers because you'll become like them. That takes discipline. I have a lot of friends here that are in the world, but I don't fellowship with them. I don't go in my car with them. 
I don't go surfing with them. I, you know, you hang out with believers. That will help you persevere in your faith. If you hang out with non-Christians, you'll become like non-Christians. Unless you're playing your music and reading your Bible and making a point, which I used to do. And then those guys didn't want to hang out with me anymore because it's too much Jesus, <laughs> right? It's okay. Y'all go on. I love you. I'll pray for you. So speaking of Flint, I used to go to summer camp in West Texas in the hill country. For five or six years, I went to a summer camp and I heard the gospel every single night. And I didn't listen. And I went through a lot of problems in my life, even though I heard the gospel every night. God later brought me back around, praise the Lord. But the one thing that I remember so much besides hearing the gospel from Frog Sullivan, who had a son named Tadpole, um, there is this rock called Flint, and it's all over the hill country in Texas. And Indians, Native Americans, would make arrowheads out of them. And you can go to riverbeds in Texas after it rains and find these. They're really cool. But Flint is a really hard, a dark, hard rock. And so the Bible uses Flint to express hardness or toughness like a horse's hoof in Isaiah 5:28. To show how unwavering determination, which is also in Ezekiel 3, 8 through 9, can, um, in order to complete a seemingly impossible task, which is in Deuteronomy 8, 15, Daniel, and Psalm 114, 80. The parking guy just went by. <laughs> Two of them. And they went right by my car. Praise God. <laughs> okay. All right. So, hey, Daniel's hovering by the car. Thank you, Daniel, for covering us. All right. So, in Isaiah 54 through 11, it says, Set your face like flint. And I want you to read this right now. Turn over to Isaiah 50. Isaiah, oh chap. Let's take a look. Isaiah 50, right after 49. Right before 51. Isaiah 50, 4 through 11. Okay, now this is part of the servant songs. And these are all messianic prophecies that Isaiah is speaking as a prophet. So in verse 4 it says, The Lord God has given me the tongue of disciples. Look at the word me. It's, notice it's capitalized. So who is me? Jesus. So this is spoken 700 years before Jesus. Prophecies of Jesus. The Lord God has given me the tongue of disciples so that I may know how to sustain the weary one with a word. This is what he was going to do 700 years later. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to listen as a disciple. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not disobedient, nor did I turn back. I gave my back to those who strike me. This is a speaking, a prophetic word that Jesus was going to have his back thrashed when they whipped him. I gave my back to those who strike me and my cheeks to those who pull out my beard. I did not hide my face from insults and spitting. Remember, they spit on him on the way to the cross. For the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I am not disgraced. Therefore, I have made my face like flint. And I know that I will not be ashamed. We don't have to worry about what people think of us. If people are spitting on you and opposing you and saying bad things about you. Look what Jesus went through. Verse 8, He who vindicates me is near. We will be vindicated. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess one day that Jesus is Lord, whether they like it or not. We will be vindicated. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up to each other. Who has a case against me? Let him approach me. The best thing y'all can do is have a you know, the best defense is a good offense. If you're standing by the Word of God, doing what God wants, Andrew, Daniel, okay, then uh, you don't have to worry. 
You're just doing God's will. Behold, the Lord God helps me. He, who is he who condemns me? Behold, they will all wear out like a garment. A moth will eat them. Don't worry about the people in your life that oppose you. The people that you see in the news that put down Christians and the people that tell you that none of this is true and the Bible is not true and it's all a bunch of, you know, a myth. But they are greatly mistaken, right? A moth will eat them. Verse 10, Who is among you who fears the Lord, who obeys the voice of His servant, who walks in darkness and has no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. That's what we're asked to do, y'all. Persevere. Keep rowing in the power of the Holy Spirit for the team, for the kingdom. Trust in the name of the Lord. Rely on Him. When you go to In-N-Out Burger, just look under the drink cup after Christmas. Right now it's Isaiah 9-6. It'll pretty soon go back to Proverbs 3-5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your understanding, but acknowledge Him in all your ways and He'll make your path straight. Trust Him. It says on the back of your penny if you forget. In God we trust. If you forget your Bible, read your penny. Behold, all you who kindle a fire, who encircle yourselves with flaming arrows, walk in the light of your fire, and among the flaming arrows you have set ablaze. This you will have for my hand. You will lie down in torment. Woo! Don't like that last part? I've been reading about hell lately in a little book by John Piper. And most people don't want hell to be real. But it is very real. In fact, Jesus talked about hell more than anybody else in the Bible. Because He's trying to scare the hell out of us. Right? Think about it. He wants to tell us about it so we won't want to go there place of gnashing teeth like oh why didn't I trust him why didn't I believe there's a lot of believers that have not persevered and fallen away and they live miserable lives until they die and go to heaven and they leave a huge wreckage behind on earth I don't want to be that guy I want to hear well done good and faithful servant yeah. persevere Jesus had to have unwavering determination to persevere in the excruciating task set before him. He would need to set his face like flint on the cross and persevere through that whole ordeal when they were mocking him. To persevere in the flesh, because he was in the flesh on that moment, and endure all the humiliation and die for our sins. We have a great example. Number two, persevere in the face of opposition, which is what we just read about. God wants us to be able to face opposition in the coming year and set our faces like flint. Be ready for the opposition. It is coming. That's what the Lord's put on my heart. It's just going to get worse. Being a Christian in our culture, it is so unwoke. Being a Christian is so unwoke. I'm sorry. There's so many things that we believe that the woke thing doesn't. Okay? So, when you want to stand by the Word of God, you're going to have opposition. In the beginning, man, God made man and He made female, and that's what we have. There's no others, right? There's man and woman. No combinations of, or hybrids or whatever. No, you know, you can't think you're something you're not. That's, that's when you need to have some counseling when you think you're somebody else. So, I know a lot of people wish they were a girl or a guy when they're young because they see them having fun and all this kind of stuff. But in the bottom line, you're either a guy or a girl. So, be ready for the opposition. It's coming. Satan wants you to fail. He wants you to fall. He's going to go after the Word of God. He's going to tell you it's not true. He's going to go after your family. He's been trying hard at times to come after our family. All my kids right here, we're huge targets. He's come after our family, working hard. He goes after my wife in the middle of the night. She'll be up all night praying. I pray every night against that, that the angels surround our home and rebuke the devil, get him out of our dreams, out of our thoughts, because the accuser of the brethren puts these dumb thoughts in our head. So-and-so said something about me. Oh, really? Don't worry about it. But they think I'm, no. Remember what Jesus thinks of you. You're a child of God, holy, 
child of God. I saw this on the newsstand. Heaven and the afterlife. What awaits us? Oh, maybe they're finally getting saved. No, absolutely not. There's nothing in here that's good to read. You know, Billy Graham said all, all roads lead to heaven. Uh, you know, Jesus didn't ever talk about hell. And this is just put it in the trash. They're going to come at you mentally. When I was in the Ukraine, because that was the, the attack on the Russians was at the mind level. The communists attacked their mind to try to get them to believe there was no God so that they worship the state. And that's the ultimate goal in our country, I believe, is for us to rely on the state for the government to provide for us instead of Jesus, right? But that's what communism and socialism does. So they attacked them at that level. So we're with our team in this hotel for three months, and all of a sudden one of our team members in 1994 says, I don't think I believe in God anymore. I'm like, what? Where did that come from? You know who that came from. That came straight from Satan. So we had to start praying in the hotel, praying against all these lies from Satan to undermine us at the mental level, the intellectual level. When we go to Malawi and do ministry in the villages, everybody gets saved. We go into Blantyre where people are educated and less people are interested because they've had all these ideas from academia to get them to doubt God to doubt the Bible, to doubt uh, creation, to believe in evolution. You know, for 20, 25 years, I told my sixth grade class, you know, there's two thoughts, evolution and intelligent design. And this year, I want you to look at the two ideas and come to your conclusion based on the evidence and be able to make an assertion at the end of the year. I believe in evolution or I believe in intelligent design because of these reasons. Be a good common core student. And by the way, if you find any evidence for evolution, I know somebody that will give you $10,000. He lives in Bellflower. His name is Ray Cuff. Why did I say that? Because there is no evidence of evolution because it never happened. And so that's what they, they will do, um, use Darwin to attack the mind and undermine scripture. So then they come up with theistic evolution. God started and then it evolved. No, I can go on and on about this, but irreducible Complexity is one of the biggest things in the way of the evolutional model because you can never have anything less than a cell If you don't have the mitochondria, the mitochondria you don't have the the vacuoles You don't have the Golgi apparatus. You don't have all any of those parts of the cell. It's no longer a cell Either a cell or not a cell. You can't have half a cell So the first cell was a cell So in, uh, there was never a cell involving First, God said, let there be an animal suit. And this is going to be a rabbit. Let there be a rabbit. So I would talk about this. We're going to get opposition mentally to try to get us to not believe. That's a big deal in our country right now. Big deal. James 1.12 says, Blessed is one who perseveres under the trial because having stood the test. This is a test for the church. The person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love Him. God will give you the crown of life if you persevere. Is there a set coming in? Everybody's looking around. <laughs> that peak over there is insane. That right, watch that right over there. It's such a good peak. Okay, so. Three, persevere in prayer. Don't stop praying. Look at Luke. 11. Look at Luke. 11. Verse 5. 11, 5. And he said to them, This is Jesus. Suppose one of you has a friend and goes to him at midnight and says to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, because a friend of mine has come to me from a journey and I have nothing to serve him. And from inside he answers and says, Do not bother me. The door's already been shut. Do you know what time it is? Right? And my children and I are in bed. I cannot give up, get up, and give you anything. I tell you, even if you will not get up and give him anything just because he is his friend, yet because of his shamelessness, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. So I say to you, 
Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks it will be opened. Now which one of you fathers with this, will his son ask for a fish, and instead of a fish he'll give him a snake? Or he'll even ask for an egg and his father will give him a scorpion? So, if you despite being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Just say, Father, fill me with your Spirit every day. Pray every day. Do not stop. P-R-A-Y. Praise Him. Repent when necessary. Ask for what you need and then yield. And surrender to God. By the, and uh, also stay in the Word at the same time we have a reading plan we're starting and we'll send that out on our email starting we're going to read the whole New Testament <sighs> starting tomorrow on the 1st and we'll be done through the whole New Testament by June so so two chapters a day so if you haven't gotten on our email list get on there and Mary will make a calendar and we'll send that out to you persevere in prayer look at Colossians 4 2 through 6 Colossians. Whenever I see Colossians, I think of colossal. God is huge, right? Colossians 4, 2 through 6. Devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving. Praying at the same time for us as well, that God will open up to us a door for the word, so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ, for which I have also been imprisoned that I may make it clear in the way that I ought to proclaim it. Conduct yourselves with wisdom toward outsiders, making the most of your opportunities. Your speech must also always be with grace, as though seasoned with salt, so that you will know how you should respond to each person. Don't stop praying, and pray for doors to open, so that you can minister. Lord, show me somebody to talk to today. Show me somebody that I can talk to today. Or help so-and-so that you know about, that they may preach the word. Pray for a missionary. Pray for us. Pray for other preachers in the area. Persevere in prayer. I had a wonderful surprise at my brother's house in Santa Barbara Thursday night because about 25 years ago, my cousin divorced my cousin, Darlene. Anyway, so I hadn't seen her since 20 years ago. We went to Calvary Chapel, and I heard that she wasn't going to church and all this. I just been praying for her because she was so hurt. She got a big truck and some jet skis and just went out and started playing. <laughs> She's so funny. But, so, her daughter came to the door at my brother's house on Thursday night and said, I have a surprise for you. And Darlene walked in. <sighs> so cool. She's so full of the Spirit. She's doing so well with the Lord. She has no money. She lives in government housing in Santa Barbara because of the divorce. She has no money. She walked in the door just, just beaming. Gave me a big hug. We just started bawling. I just kept praying for her over those years. Don't stop praying. And then she said, Oh, you won't believe Kavanaugh. I said, Really? What? He is on fire for Jesus. So, at our last family reunion this summer in Colorado, I met this guy Kavanaugh for the second time since he was younger. And he lives in Solvang, and he's like my kids. He skates, he's a photographer, all that kind of stuff. And we had great talks about Jesus. And I just started praying for him ever since I was in Colorado. And while I was praying for him, he was at Santa Barbara City College, and he met four or five Christians on campus that invited him to do some kind of a game with them. And then now he's going to their church in Isla Vista, Acts 2, and Darlene said, Kavanaugh loves Jesus. And his mother, Beth, came to me, and she was in youth with a mission, too. She said, you will not believe Kavanaugh right now. He, all he talks about is, Jesus is amazing. Prayer, guys. Pray for people that you know that don't know the Lord, or at least are coming close, you know? How cool is that? I got two answers to prayer in one night. So stoked. After surfing great waves at Campus Point in Santa Barbara with my four children right next to my dorm that I used to live in. It was so cool. 
the dorm was right there. We're all getting waves on the point. It was just this beautiful moment how God, because I was a mess back there, and God has turned my mess into a message, right? So they could see where I came from, all my crazy stories, and Isla Vista, and where I am now. God is so good. Hallelujah. Woo! Somebody say amen. 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 My last point, we're doing pretty good with the time. My last point is persevere through pain. You know what? I've been learning about this lately. Because when you're really in pain, I mean really in pain, when you wake up and you can't walk to the bathroom, you can't stand in the kitchen and make your coffee. I mean really in pain. Sitting rolling on a lacrosse ball on your sciatic nerve. I started to think about Jesus, you know, and his nails through his wrists and his ankles and all of a sudden those words on the page become real to me. And I've been reading about spies in World War II that would get tortured in France to the for they would take it for two days to give their friends time to get away before they gave a name. It was like a promise. Anybody with these agents from England, they all promised to take the torture for two days to give all their buddies time to get out of there when so-and-so got arrested by the Gestapo. Hideous tortures. Hideous. I don't even want to talk about it. And I started thinking about how they persevered to beat the enemy, Hitler. Persevering through pain, y'all. Just wow. keep on going. Emotional. And emotional pain, too. Exactly. Sometimes there's that emotional pain that's just so tough to beat. Someone just leaves you. All of a sudden, someone just, you thought they were your friend. And all of a sudden, they totally ghost you. They didn't even call you anymore. And I, you thought you had all these plans together. How many you know what I'm talking about? This disappeared. Maybe I was that guy sometime, too. Lord, have mercy on me. You know, we're, we're fickle, aren't we, as people? We need to learn to be faithful, right, with our friends. Amen? We've been on both sides of that, haven't we? Right? But emotional pain from divorce and from every whatever else. Disappointments. Right? Disappointments. I was getting my... I, I broke one of my teeth. I actually knocked these out surfing when I was 14 in Texas. The other day I was eating a roll and I broke off one of them. So this past week, the same day I was getting acupuncture, I went and had these cut out. So I went for deconstruction and reconstruction. And all of the same day, that was a bad choice. And then going to acupuncture. By, the, by that night, I was like on the mat. One, two, three. No, but um, my dentist said, the other day this guy came in really happy. He said, why are you so happy? He said, well, I changed my standards. I decided to lower all my standards for my children. You know, they're at least they're not at, on Hope Street. At least they're not sleeping in a gutter. At least they're not a prostitute. You know, all this stuff. And he was really happy because he lowered all his standards because of all the emotional pain that comes from disappointment with children, right? So all these things we have to persevere through. So turn to Romans 5. And this gives us our our instructions here for what to do when we have this happen to us. Let's start with verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we also have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand. His grace draws us. Our faith in response saves us. Right? obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand and we celebrate in hope of the glory of God. And not only this, but we also celebrate in our tribulations. Really? All right, tribulations. Do we do that? No, we're being asked to do this. Why? We celebrate in our tribulations knowing that tribulation brings what? What does it say there? Perseverance. That's what we need. So how do we get it? We go through something hard. <laughs> Guess what? There's another hard thing coming. It's a promise. We will have another trial. So we need to look at it and go consider it, as it says in James, joy when you encounter these trials. It says so much the same thing in James 1. It brings about perseverance. 
and perseverance proven character. I would like to be have character instead of being a character, wouldn't you? Character and proven character, hope. There it is. That was the word for last year. But when we persevere this year, it'll also bring hope. And hope does not disappoint. Are you disappointed about something? Think about it. Are there things that have disappointed you lately? Are there people that have disappointed you? Have you disappointed yourself? Well, guess what? Hope will not disappoint. Woo! Look at your neighbor and say, that's good. That's okay. <laughs> Hope does not disappoint. Why? Because the love, there it is, the biggest four-letter word in the Bible. Love. 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 What the world needs now is love, sweet love. Right? I remember hearing that in the back of the station wagon with like 15 kids in Dallas going to Six Flags in 1966. No seat belts, kids everywhere. <clears throat> because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who is who has who was given to us. We have the Holy Spirit that gives us all this. So as the Holy as I, I'm going to have the worship team come up. I want you to think about Jesus. He was our example. He came to earth to show us the Father and to be an example. He also got down on His knees and prayed in the garden and sweat blood before He went to the cross. He said, oh, by the way, Father, can we do something different? Can you take this cup away from me? But no, he didn't, he didn't shirk it. He stayed with it. He persevered. And He endured all of this stuff. Opposition. He endured pain. He endured humiliation. He endured all of that at the cross for us. So what is our response? Imitate Christ in our way, in our life. Stay on the oars. Stay on the oars. Stay on the oars. Holy Spirit, fill me with Your strength. Those who wait on the Lord will not grow weary, will run and not faint. Walk and not faint. Run and not grow weary. Stay on the oar for Jesus. Persevere. And our boat will get there. And we are going to win. We are victors. We are getting the Olympic medal that you'll see in that movie. We are getting the medal at the end because we win. We're already in, seated in the heavenly realms in Christ. Now we need to live like it. So let's, let's bow our heads for a second. And just take stock in your own life. How are you doing with Jesus? At the beginning of another year, on the eve of another year, how are you doing? Just let the Lord examine your heart. Lord, just examine our hearts right now. I, I pray this in the mornings. Lord, search my heart. Test my anxious thoughts. And show me if there's any iniquity. You know what iniquity is? It means sin that I'm thinking about doing. Sin that I'm planning. Lord, show me if I have any iniquity in me. Any malice. Any unforgiveness. Any bitterness. Let Him search your heart. Just wait on Him. Thank you, Lord. Just say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive my sins, Lord. Cleanse me. Fill me with Your Spirit. so that I can persevere in the new year. Now maybe some of you guys don't know Jesus. You know about Him, but you've never been born again. The Bible says, unless you're born again, you should not enter, in the, enter into the kingdom of heaven. Why is that? Because the imperishable cannot inherit, the perishable cannot inherit the imperishable. Our perishable bodies cannot be in heaven. They're going to perish. We're going to get out of this body and our spirit's going to go. So where are you going to go? Heaven or hell? 
we make that decision before we leave. The wages of sin is death, here in this life and after. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. That's what Christmas is all about. In fact, 2024, this year, is marked by the life of Christ. Our calendar starts with, is built around the life of Christ. Because He is the center of everything. Just like Israel is the center of everything. It's all going to start there, it's all going to end there. If you want to know Christ today, and you've never asked Him to come into your heart, raise your hand, I'd like to pray with you. Anybody? Okay, in case somebody just doesn't want to do it right this second, not sure what to pray, or somebody passing by hasn't heard, let's all pray the prayer together that we prayed once before. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Forgive me. Thank you for going to the cross for me. For going to the cross. For dying for me. Dying for me. I know you rose from the dead. I know you rose. From the dead. I believe what you said. I believe what you said. Come into my heart. Into my heart. Live in me. Live in me. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your spirit. So that I can live for you. So I can live for you. And love people. Love Deal with people. And persevere. And persevere. And one day go to heaven. And one day go to heaven. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big clap. God good? Yeah. Are y'all encouraged? Yeah. Are y'all like cha uh, challenged to go get him? It's like a pep rally. He might give me a J. Give me a E. Give me a S. Give me a U. Give me a S. What's that spell? Jesus. What's that spell? Jesus. What's that spell? Jesus. Say that name. 